Welcome back to Uncover Your Magic. It is so interesting how in life, when you realize there are no coincidences and people who appear in your life at the exact timing are there for reasons you don't even realize at the time. But when you look back, you think, ah, that's why I met them, or that's why that happened to me at that time in my life. Like I always say, everything is always working for you, not to you. After learning about my guest today, Lisa Winston, I had so many moments that I related to and realize now that I heard after I heard her story, how learning to surrender and trust in whatever you experience in life are for a reason and lessons that will take you further in growth and learning in this life you are living. After you hear Lisa's story today, I think you will be able to look back at your life and see why certain things happened and why they played a role in who you are today. Everything in life is to grow, is to grow you and to get you to reach higher and to expand your consciousness. So when you leave this earth, you did what you came to do and can check those boxes off for the, for off the list for your next life. Even if you don't believe in that thinking, I really want you to still realize we are here to grow. And when you see anything that comes your way as an obstacle, look at it as a gift. Like one of my favorite books, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. It's about turning your trials into triumph. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. Lisa Winston has such an amazing story. And after listening, you might think, wow, my life hasn't been so hard as I thought it was. She is a true example of looking at her life as lessons and gifts and sees the true meaning and has gratitude for each moment and looks for the silver lining. You are going to love Lisa's story, and I really think it will change the way you look at your own life. It has for sure um, has changed my way of looking at my life. Um, Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about Lisa Winston. Lisa Winston is a gifted vocalist, number one international bestselling author of Your Turning Point, a TV host, intuitive mindset strategist, and inspirational speaker. A life of extreme challenges, including losing her home to wildfire, breast cancer, and neuro Lyme disease made her hungry for a deeper connection to source and determined to find her true calling. Today, she shares the message that life is always happening for you and challenges are sent to refine, not define you. Lisa has produced many influential global summits and is also featured on on online summits, national radio, podcasts, and trainings. She co-hosts and produces the Mindset Reset TV show, a weekly series which reaches millions worldwide. Lisa is so grateful to be a mom to her beautiful daughter, Sarah, and to live, teach, and speak across the globe with her soulmate, life partner, and love, Dr. Joe Vitale. So without further ado, please welcome Lisa Winston to the show. Please welcome Lisa Winston to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so super excited to be here today. I'm so grateful (laughs) and listening to your story and listening like we have San Diego in common and there's so many different things that your thought processes and what you went through and all these things that come together and I've learned from you for the last few days of doing my deep dive Lisa Winston. Um, it, It was just so fun and just such a it makes you really, what the listeners are going to get from this is uh, everything's always working for them. Everything in life is a gift. There's the obstacles are a gift and, and surrendering and trusting. Those are the things that come from what I've, what I'm kind of going to come from this conversation because I'm all about surrender. I've, I've always, you know, know when you look back, you know, that's the easiest way to look back and you'd like, oh, well, geez, I met him. No wonder I did. Or that happened to me. No wonder it happened. Look now. I mean, everything's, you know, you look back at things and realize those are the gifts and that's why we're here. And we take those little breadcrumbs and we walk along this path and you just trust and you know that the next one's coming and you know that every little alley that you have to go down will lead you back to the yellow brick road. I always call it the yellow brick road. (laughs) Um, But, you know, we all have, we're here to grow and learn. This is why we're here on this earth and why we chose to be here, right? So why would it be kind of boring if it was just all, you know? It would be. (laughs) There are days I'd like a little boring. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Uh, Lisa, will you tell us, like, will you go back to, 
you you're I mean, even go back to when you were married and all, I mean, all the things, but when you kind of discovered, you know, what you were doing and the magic that came in and how you like turned your life around. Oh gosh, I don't even know where to go. That's such a long story, I guess. You know, it's weird. I mean, from the time I was a child, I knew I always considered myself special. I didn't know what that meant because I always just felt connected to something, God, whatever you want to call it. And so of course, like a lot of us, I went, you know, Christianity and, and Messianic Judaism. Like I went this whole <laughs> route right. to, try to figure out what that was, you know, that connection. And, um, and I, and I had a lot of challenges, although I think because of my background, I was, you know, addicted to drama and a lot of people are. So a lot of times if we let go of that, you know, it gets, it gets a little easier sometimes, but, um, I just, was so I, I had some really big beliefs about myself that when I was small I was very vocal I needed a lot of attention I came in with a lot of fear and I really felt that I was never paid attention to I was told I was too much from a very early age and mm-hmm. I was never really accepted for who I am and as you know I mean I'm a sensitive intuitive empath right like and I'm like six times sensitive so it's crazy and nobody knew that. And as a child, I just felt wrong because I was like, what's wrong with me? You know, I don't understand. So um, I really kind of followed that course through school and everything, just feeling worthless and, and picking, making bad choices. Right. <laughs> and um, uh, I had a first marriage. It was very brief. It was about two years. And he went off and had an affair. And then the second marriage was where I had my daughter and that was where I was married to a narcissist um, sociopath. And that was a very difficult journey because as you and I were just talking about, I was fairly unconscious back then. I still had the connection, but I hadn't, you know, I was just dabbling in it. And of course, when you're with an abuser, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, I ended up having my daughter. I ended up leaving, um, gosh, I was in that marriage for about seven years, seven and a half years. And I left when my daughter was three. Okay. And I left because I knew that something bad would have happened. You know, he had guns and I mean, there were all kinds of oh, things. Wow. So, um, how do you I, leave I that? Because that's a hard situation. I just know those situations with that kind of a personality is a hard one, especially as a woman to leave with the child. Yeah. Well, we were really involved in, he was a Jew and I was uh, messianic. I was whatever I was. I was raised Lutheran and I was, we were really involved in like reach out, you know, for Passover and stuff, the Christian churches and all that. And it was funny because I really had a lot of church abuse at that time. And that's one of the reasons I ended up leaving because I was really turned on when I said I wanted to go because I was in this marriage that was just devastating me. I mean, it was, there was like physical, I think on our mar- on our wedding night, he tried to choke me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I should have had it annulled. Right. But I didn't. Right. Huh. So it was a very love, hate, you know, a very sick, dysfunctional relationship. And I knew I had to leave and get out of there. And my daughter was absolutely heartbroken. I mean, she, of course, having children, you know, our kids are so affected by what we do. And I felt I was making the right decision. So anyway, I ended up in another relationship for 15 years. So it was sandwiched between all these abusive people trying to protect my daughter who was, I mean, it's, you know, she, if you read my book, you can hear some of my stories about um, what happened with my daughter. And she's still trying to dig out at the age of 26. Hmm. So at the end, so that 15 year relationship, um, during that time in 2007, um, the wildfires came along in San Diego and I lost my house to wildfire. And my daughter had lost her house in the Cedar fire four years previous to, oh, to wow. our fire, which was the Ridge, the Witch Creek fire. I remember and, that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. They were both huge. And about two months after that fire and we were starting to rebuild, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I believe it was all stress related because it just kind of popped out. Oh, totally. Right. And so that's when I really was on my knees. I was on my face. I'm like, I was so miserable and I felt like I was dying and I I was so unhappy. And so I really started reading. I I was praying a lot. I read a lot of books like Eckhart Tolle. And also, I don't know if you remember, there was a woman named Lynn Grabhorn. She's now- Yes. Excuse me, your life is waiting. Oh my God. That was one of the biggest- books that shifted me my energy around it was phenomenal I used to love to listen to the, the audio version of it but anyway and I was and I started working doing spring force qigong and working with master mm-hmm. chun yi lin in, in Minneapolis 
And that's when I really started to have shifts because I was spending time in my back room, you know, for hours doing Qigong, meditating, praying and connecting. And when your energy is small, like mine was, and you start doing that stuff, you are filled up like that. And you feel things and see things that you don't huh, right. <laughs> normally see, right? So the sky kind of opened and I got a download one day, just an absolute intuitive download that I knew that I knew I had to leave that relationship. And that's when I, I left, um, gosh, probably was about seven or eight years ago, actually at the tender age of oh. something, huh. I decided I, I needed to leave, take my daughter and find my path, my passion and my purpose. And, so and she was how old? How old was Sarah at that time? Gosh, Sarah had been, um, I think she was in, she was, went to Rancho Bernardo high school. That was oh, she it. Did? I think she, yeah. I think she was a junior or a senior that year when I left. And um, I, it, it was so freeing when I left, but it was also difficult. Um, but that's that was really when I started my journey of, you know, um, uh, working more on my intuitive capabilities. I moved to Malibu for a while and um, worked with a group there. And then I also did some coaching. I, I signed up for coaching. And so I, I just entered this whole new world. And of course, huh. <laughs> you know, when you are trying to build a business and you don't have a lot of self-worth, it's a, it's a tough ride. Yeah, I bet. So, yeah. So that's, um, that's how I really got into this, this whole journey. Of but when you, yeah, but when you go from, uh, this relationship, these relationships with these men and you're still not, uh, you haven't discovered your power or your, who you truly are, but you go back and you're living, um, in that house and it just, something came to you that you wanted, like, you just had this, like, this is what I have to start going deeper. I need to find who I truly am. Yes. Yeah, it was, I had a lot of epiphanies. I always look at in numerology. I look at the addresses of the house. And I was oh, like, I do too. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Every time you're moving, what's the address? I got to add it up. Right. Yeah. Well, I was in a lot of seven houses. So I had a lot oh, of spiritual cool. lessons to learn and uh, boy, did I ever, but I really had to surrender to the fact that life was throwing me a lot of stuff. You know, I have to say, um, during the year that, that we rebuilt and I had the breast cancer, I would say that was one of the most conscious years of my life though, because you know, when you're rebuilding and you're in, you're in it, mm -hmm. you actually have to live present moment. You cannot, I mean, you don't have anything, everything's gone and you're starting right. new, right? And so in a way it was a really freeing, amazing year. And I think that's one of the years, I think that probably is the year that I really took off with the spiritual practices. And the person I was living with at the time thought I was a, a weirdo, you know, but I knew I had, I had to go that route because I was just being called so deeply right. huh. in, so, in your intuition, right? Isn't this yeah. when you start to like yeah. realize, and you're listening to that voice that's saying, move to Malibu. Is that what you're doing? I just met people. We were just talking about this too. You know, when you start being connected or aligned with the divine, um, we're always trying to find things, but like you and I were just talking about, if we were really aligned and, and really listening there's this place that you get to where you're so aligned because you are spirit. You're the divine and human form. So you're getting the community, the information. If you're listening, these things start to fall in your lap. These, these little pieces, like we were talking puzzle pieces, these, this information that doesn't maybe make sense in the moment, but, but you're being guided to take those steps. And when you take those steps and the next step and the next step, that's where you start to unfold, you know, you're, you're always heading in the right direction. If you're listening to your inner voice, right. And saying, and so yes, that's what I did. Yes. Right? So that's, saying yes. yes. Yeah. That's what I did. And I, people thought I was crazy. There were days I thought I was crazy. And, I, and just to let you know, I hit a lot of bumps along the way, a lot of bumps, but mm -hmm. it was all part of the journey. So, right. And it's always the, you know, it's when people say yes, when they hear that voice and trusting it, you know, Cause you know that there's a, I always call it the magic, but you, you just keep saying yes. And if you know, like that, that, once you get used to saying yeses, yeah. I feel like, oh, well, I said that. Yes, I can do it again. I, I did that. Well, you know, and the, you know, teaching even my, how I raise my daughters that, that way, like, you know, learning how to, at a young age, learning how to take a risk and just realizing I can do that. Then may, way I can do that, you know? And knowing that, yeah, there's going to be obstacles. I, in the intro, I wrote um, that book, The Obstacle is the Way. Have you ever read that? that no, but I, I'm laughing because I have a little thing here that Joe gave me. It's a little button and it says, the obstacle is the way. Oh, my god! on my desk. 
Yeah. You just gave me goosebumps. And I don't yeah. even know when I was doing the introduction, that book came to me this morning when I was listening to you. And I thought, oh, I love that book. The obstacle is the way that is so, so, you know, looking at it as a, um, as the gifts, you know, everything is a gift. Life is a gift. And it to is. look at that way and everything, I mean, to have breast cancer. And then you found out you had Lyme disease. Like, well, that's <laughs> like how it's like you kick the dog or whatever they say, you keep going. Yeah. But you know, what's funny about it is because you and I were just also talking about how, um, Joe and I met and, and Joe Vitale who's my partner, my life partner. And I, I told you, I had interviewed him on a summit years before we, or a year, a year before we actually met in person. And then we worked together for almost another year, but, um, it's funny how these things just fall in your lap and you never know, you know, why they're happening or how it's happening. You just say yes. And you take the next step and you keep living your life and things just open up and they unfold for you. And so anyway, uh, when Joe and I finally got together, um, which was difficult because he, he filed for divorce and it was, his wife was not happy. And I understand that he, and he had been with her for 20 years. I mean, he's somebody who is very loyal and he stays with, with people, but he knew that, you know, he was being called also. and, And there was a change to be made. And so we were traveling, um, and we went to Thailand and we went to Italy. We stayed in Italy for an entire month and um, we were doing speaking engagements. And I, we stayed, we ended up staying in a house that had toxic mold. Oh, wow. And so I was ve- getting very sick. And also, <laughs> I don't know if your viewers or your listeners believe in this stuff or not, but I also, there were a lot of um, <clears throat> entities or, you know, interference mm-hmm. energy in the house that were attaching to me because I'm sensitive. So it was a very interesting ride when we were in Italy. It was lovely, but also very difficult. And then when I, right at the end of our trip um, in Milan, where we did last speaking engagement, we found out his father passed away like two days before we left to come back to the States. And so we came back, he got on a plane to go to Ohio to be, you know, with his family at his father's funeral. And I ended up in emergency that night in the emergency room with my heart, my heart was beating 180 beats per minute or whatever they put me in. They didn't know it was wrong. So over the course of the next two months, I was deathly ill. I almost died. And I finally ended up finding a functional doctor. And apparently I've had chronic Lyme disease all my life. I've had, I was bitten by ticks in Pennsylvania when I was five all the time. My dad would pour gasoline over my Oh, funny. Right. (laughs) You know, or nail polish or whatever in the good old days. And, um, but my immune system went down and so that year was one of the worst of my life and it's just interesting how you know i wrote my book i'm gonna you know plug it your turning point yes um but it was funny because i had just gone through this divine experience taking care of my mother till she passed and and moving and, and being with joe and all this stuff was amazing and then bam i get almost taken out and so i really um started to question you know, it was kind of like, is, is there a God there? Because in that moment, I, it was very dark. I didn't feel like there, I had angels, guides or anything um, mm-hmm. watching over me. So it was really a test um, for me. And I came up with, uh, I'm going to be working on some things called be brave enough <clears throat> because you really do, you know, every, everybody has to be brave enough, but just for right. each day, one day at a time, right? Yes. And so it was really difficult because it was kind of like, am I being punished? What's going on? Well, no, it was just another part of the, you know, the puzzle piece. And Mm -hmm. Joe's life completely got, you know, blown out. I mean, there were just so many things that happened, but it's interesting. So you can say, yes, you can follow your path. You can be aligned. And when I was with my mother, I was in this miracle space, which I wrote about where it was just unbelievable love and, and things dropping in my lap. But then I went to this other space. Well, I was still in the miracle space but I was being tested and I was being grown Mm -hmm. and it was painful. It was hard. So you can be in that miracle space. We, we are in a miracle space. Everything is a miracle right now that, you know, but yet it's not all roses. It's not. And so, like you said, we need to work on surrendering to it, saying, yes, you know, asking the question, what is this here to teach me? Right. And move forward from there. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip of water. No, you're good. But you know, when you think of how, how did they know that you had Lyme disease your whole mm-hmm. life? They just oh, can find that in your body? Yeah, when I, I had I had gotten tested and I was very blessed because this is <laughs> this is the beauty of it. It was so hard. And when you read about people who have chronic Lyme, 
<clears throat> they think they have fibromyalgia. Sorry, the Lyme affects my voice sometimes too. Oh, so wow. <clears throat> yes, it happens sometimes and sometimes it's good. But a lot of people have Lyme and they think they have fibromyalgia and arthritis and all these things. So they are looking their whole lives. I had symptoms, but I didn't know what they were. Hmm. And so when my immune system collapsed, everything just went crazy. And so when they tested me for various things, I had like Epstein-Barr, I had, you know, mycoplasma and pneumonia, Jeez. all these things. I had like 12 co-infections. But once your immune system goes down, your body just goes wonky. And I had neuro Lyme, so I couldn't see for six months. I couldn't drive. I couldn't space. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I thought I was going to be brain damaged forever. So... And that's a sign of, and then when I looked back, I was like, you know, oh, I see that I did have that, but nobody knew it. They just thought I was crazy. But the beauty of it is, is that I found a, a functional doctor within two months and I got put on a program. Now I'm still 75% better and I'm still not completely over it. I have a lot of symptoms, but it was interesting because all along the way I was brought to people just when I needed them. So it was kind of like, I can sit and complain about it. But in reality, I was still following that path and spirit was still giving me answers, you know, all along the way. Mm -hmm. I had a much easier mm -hmm. ride than a lot of people. When you, when you have that and you're like, I mean, can't see and drive and you're, are you really working on your inner? Cause you know how to, to focus on alignment and your vibration and all that. Are you, are you, or are you like, woe is me? How, is it hard to pick your, is it, are the mountains and the valleys like deep? and high that's or... a good question yeah I have to be honest with your audience and that is I thought I was dying and I thought I was being punished and I really lost my faith for a while I did hmm. you know when you get tested like that you see that you think I, I wear a little thing here you know I have the faith faith of a mustard seed there's a mustard seed oh, in there. yeah I love that and that's all you need but when you get tested like that and I thought I was dying so I was angry I hadn't seen my daughter you know just a lot of things were Un, undone, unresolved for me. And I had to work my way back. And so because I am a, a, I'm, I'm a doer, I mean, I also go within, but like I did affirmations and visualizations and I would stand on the bed, you know, and put my little speaker microphone up on the wall and, and I would tape myself, you know, even when I couldn't see. I was, I was doing things to future pace myself so that like I was in the future and I was actually speaking in front of audiences again. And um, I would just, you know, I would do energy work, Donna Eden's energy medicine, which I loved. And I just did so many things. I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do everything I can do mm -hmm. and hopefully I will heal. You know, I didn't know at that point if I would heal, but I, I thought hopefully I will heal. So I took out, you know, everything I knew from my toolbox and I had, it took me a couple of months too. I worked with a lot of energy healers. I did, you know, hypnosis. I did all kinds of like every, right, modality. Right. every day you're like, what can I do today? <laughs> yeah. I was even cooking when I couldn't see, you know, I thought I'm going to keep moving. I'm just going to keep moving. And Joe was an incredible support. He took me to the doctor three times a week. You know, I had neurofeedback, I had all kinds of things. And uh, without his support, it would have been really tough. But um, when you're in those situations, you can do one of two things. You can give up <laughs> and, and give in and die, you know, or you can fight a bit, you know, and I had to find my, I had to find my way back to my faith and I had to um, use all the tools that I knew to get myself back in alignment. And, and that's what it, I mean, I had to take action. Right. So I did, I could have laid in bed and there were days I laid in bed. But right. for the most part, I was up and I was doing, and I was trying to find my way back to God, really. Huh. And I did find my way back. Wow. So I mean, when you think of, I look at, I know what, how you view life because you view it like I do. We're all here for a reason. We all chose this time. Um, we chose our lessons. This is what we needed to learn. We have our core wounds that we need to heal. We have karmic situations in our life that we need to experience and hopefully solve or and move on. But do you look at your life that way? Do you look over it like a, an angel from heaven? Like you're looking down at Lisa and you're like, Oh yes, she chose to do that. And that, that this all had to happen because she's showing people like, this is your gift to the world. That's how I looked at it when I've been looking at you. Yeah. I, I love that 
And, and you know, it's really, really interesting because, you know, I, I, I barely got out from being sick. It took me, you know, over a year, actually. It's been almost two years I've been working on it. But then COVID hit. Joe and I went to LA for a movie premiere uh, January of 2019. And we got back, you know, right before they started saying that COVID was, was hitting. And so really didn't have much of an opportunity. So then I, we went into isolation, which was really hard too. I haven't seen my daughter right now in a year and three months, which is yeah. I haven't seen my mom either. Ugh. Oh. Oh gosh. I so I yeah, I mean, I think all these things that are happening are the deeper lesson for myself personally. I mean, you know, in the world, you probably would agree. We all need it to put the halt on, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening. We all needed to go within and give ourselves a, a deeper look and, and a look at our lives. I think people matter a lot more now than they did before. You know, oh, everything, right? Everything life. takes, yeah, that it takes everything up a notch and, or way more than a notch. Yeah. But, I, you know, we're here and I always, I think that we pick, we chose this time, like, okay, we're going to come. I feel like there's this new, um, I had interviewed some, um, this amazing guy a few months ago and he was talking about the age of Aquarius, you know, like, right. we're, do you yeah. know that? Okay. Yeah. Cause so that was really fascinating because I could see like this evolution of uh, we're like transcending, you know, like, here we go. Oh, yeah. Like this group, we all decided now there's no way this earth is going to be the same, you know? And I think of even raising children during this time and what they've been going through and, you know, and watching them, you know, resilience and, you know, trying to figure out like their new normal and, you know, it is a new normal, just, you know, like a, they never had nine 11, you know, like after that happened to us, like, yeah, it, there was a shift. We all now, you know, I said, yeah, we used to greet people at the airport, you know, like all the little things we didn't have to do, take our shoes off. And, you know, it's like, they don't, it's all this new stuff, but gosh, it, there's like, I was listening to something that you said where everything has to collapse, you yeah. know, when you talk about that, and then that's what we did. We all, it came to this place where it had to collapse and everything, everyone, not just a certain, you know, group of people, but we all had to, it had to collapse. And now yeah. we're reforming in this new amazing thing and to look at it as it's a beautiful gift, right? It really is. I mean, Joe and I have done some, you know, free three-day masterminds and some other things. And we, it's just really the, the giant universal halt. I mean, every, everything was going in the wrong direction. And, you know, the age of Aquarius obviously is happening now. That's going to expand. That's going to go on for a long time. So we're just in the beginning phases of it. But we really did um, pick our, our place here. I'm working with somebody named Jennifer Huff, and she does Operating Thriving Systems, this program. It's really for us to remember who we are, to remember that, you know, we've been here in all kinds of other times and places and spaces and, and the universe loves us so much that it, it brought us to this space and time, brought us here. This was what we came here for. We may not know exactly what we're here to do right in this red hot minute. The thing that I, I noticed for myself, and maybe you noticed this too, in my coaching last year or two, I kind of started hesitating. I was like, how... Like I'm, I can do this and, and intuitively do it and all that, but there's just something that doesn't feel aligned. It doesn't feel authentic. And I started feeling like there's this new energy and these new tools, this new information that's going to come in. And that's what I really believe is happening. We're in that you know transition phase. We're transitioning. We're moving around. Our energy levels are, are you know raising and elevating and we're releasing stuff. And then we're going to get more information in. So I think that we're going to be more aligned authentically with what we're here to do. Um, you know, you already have found that, but I think you're going to find also new things that, that you'll learn and you'll teach, you know, children and all that you'll, you know, we're all learning this, this new information. And so um, it is a divine gift. I don't know exactly where it's going, but I know <laughs> something big is happening. I don't know what it is. Right. And, um, we're yeah, going to look I, back and say, oh, that's why that pandemic happened. That's why, you know, that one moment in our life, when, uh, however long it's going to take to look back and maybe we'll, I, don't, I mean, we'll look back, maybe we'll still be here, but there's, right. there's a, there's a reason. Well, I think yeah. it really is, you know, um, when you talk about your inner fire, your grit, you also have to, you have to have you know, that fortitude, like we can't be a bunch of weenies. You know, when I was going through Lyme initially, I felt like I was a weenie. Like I, you know, I really had no faith whatsoever. And so I really feel like we are developing our fire, our inner fire and our inner strength and our vision and our trust in ourselves. And, and again, 
I'm going to be teaching things in a whole different way because, you know, we talk about healing, but in reality, when you align with the divine, when you are in total alignment, like my book said, like I was at at that time, um, when my, my vibrations were just so high and things were just falling in my lap and I was in like in heaven on earth, you know, that's where everything's going to come from. I mean, healing comes from that space. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, even when I was trying to heal, I was doing every modality and sometimes people spontaneously heal. I didn't. Right. Right. But we're always trying to do something. We're always trying to make things happen. We're trying to figure things out from up, up here. And what we need to be doing is totally being in alignment with the energy and the divine uh, information that we are. And that's right. where everything, when we elevate, everything right. disappears. You know, it's not alive. And that, that time you're saying with, with when you were with your mother, when she yes. was passing? Oh, that when was I was when writing my were... book. Yeah, I was writing my book while my mom was dying. And, and I was just my, my TV show fell in my lap and I'm just, all these things were falling in my lap. And, and it was, I would just go, I'd be driving the car and all of a sudden I'd be like wanting to get on my knees because I had the, such divine love wash over me. And I was just bawling. I mean, that's what the space that I was in. I was in this total space of divine love and mm-hmm. it was overwhelming and it was beautiful. And I kept it, you know, like I said, till things started to fall apart. Um, but they really weren't falling apart. They were coming together, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, for the first time. Right. Uh, it just felt like that from a human space. So um, exciting times, hard times, but you know, we need to suck it up. I mean, even now I'm sitting here with you. I can't see very well. And you know, I, my tailbone hurts, my spine hurts. I mean, we have to show up, you know, we all have this weird idea as humans, or at least I, I did that, you know, if we're going to be here having this experience, we have to be totally healthy. (laughs) We have to feel good all the time. We have to be abundant. Like all these things have to be lined up, but no, you know, the beauty is, is when like I, Robert Clancy and I interviewed a woman for our show, Janie Rios, who's one of, one of the founders of women on TV and she's now she's passed away. She was on our interview weeks before she passed away from cancer and she did not feel well. Hmm. she did not look you know well you could so it's kind of like showing up regardless of your circumstances you know not waiting for everything to be perfect to show up as whoever you know doing your your work or being passionate or whatever it is like things are never going to be perfect in this human realm no okay this is where I'm going with this so when I was watching you with your mask on on a YouTube video Oh, being and I, I thought watch that. <laughs> and so no I'm listening I'm watching it this morning and I thought you know or yeah and you know it's about being authentic mm-hmm. and I you know I always and I'm going back to raising children because especially this you know you didn't Sarah probably didn't have the all the social media thing that you were dealing yeah. with when she yeah. was my kids age right and now it's like this whole thing of being perfect and the filters and all the things that these kids are just how many followers and, oh, you don't have that many. Oh, then you're nobody. I mean, the things that I hear are just mind blowing. So when I, when I watched your video and I thought, gosh, I love that because, you know, I've taken courses on, you know, where you learn how to do live video and you got to be yourself. You got to be real. You got to, you know, relate. You got people to know that it doesn't matter. We're not, that's not about being perfect. It's, it's just being you, you know, and showing your true self. And what it hit me when I was watching you, I thought, oh, I would love for my girls to do like the opposite of what they're thinking is perfect on these TikToks or the Instagram pictures and do it like that. Like, why don't you guys just be authentic and show the true girls that you are? You don't have to be the, that perfect girl, right? But you really, I loved it because it is true. Yeah, but it's hard. You know, I was an authenticity coach. And again, I was going through, you know, the years of coaching that I was building my business. I was really getting deep and hitting my old wounds and finding out who I really was. And so I went through this whole period of, you know, I was saying the F bombs all over the place because I was like, I'm standing in my power. And then I'm like, eh, that doesn't feel authentic. And then, <laughs> you know, I'm doing the mass challenges. And and I would, I had this one guy follow me all the time and he, he'd do it with me, which is great. But literally I had no, nobody else follow along. When I would post challenges, you know, to post yourself with no makeup, you know, and all that kind of stuff, nobody would show up. Oh, huh. So we have some work to do on authenticity. 
And I, I don't think, you know, sometimes people are going, this is what I look like with a filter. This is what I look like without. Now, guaranteed, the last two years have kicked my butt. So I have a lot more wrinkles. I feel, I'm starting to feel my age these days. So sometimes I edit my picture a little bit, but yet, you know, it's, there's so much social pressure, you know, and there's so much competition that people feel like they're competing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, you know, we really need to start and get back to what I taught initially also. And that was the people over 50 or 60, you know, we, we are wiser, you know, we go into that crone energy of wisdom and maturity and, and beauty and really women age, they always you know, say, well, I look uglier men. What was that? My mother used to say men age better than women. Women get uglier and women, you know, guys oh, get right, right. Over. I've heard that. <laughs> but now I've seen so many beautiful women in their seventies, eighties, you know, this just, they exude this, I don't know what it is. It's this special quality, this goddess like yes, you know, quality, sure. yes. but, and then I look at people like Christy Brinkley and stuff. And I don't, anybody who wants to have plastic surgery, I am not against whatever anybody wants to right. do. But I really grapple with that because there's a part of me, you know, that stands in the mirror and goes, yeah, I'd love to yeah. have a big lift, you me know, but, but I see so I many people that have had them and they look, they don't look like themselves. I'm going, oh, I don't like that either. Mm -hmm. So I think each one of us really has to just go within and find our own truth and learn to love ourselves the way we are. Right. For because sure. we don't. <laughs> I know. You know, we might say we do, but we don't. But, you know, I, you, you talk about, um, you know, the things you think, the thoughts you think, the words you speak, you know, all your whole day is about these yeah. thoughts and yep. what you're, you're creating everything. Yes. You're going to create your wrinkles. Or are you going to create your, you know, all, and I, you know, I always say, we watch your words, you know, what are you, yes. what are you going to, you know, I don't look, I, this, you know, these pants are tight. I don't, you know, so, I mean, you go through menopause, like, you know, and then I think, oh my gosh, it's just like a whole different shift of life. Like my whole body is complete, you know, it's like, whoa. Yeah, mine too. You know? But you yeah. just have to be like, embrace it. You yeah. know, you can't fight because I was listening to something like you're in your bikinis in your twenties because you can, you know, and just, and own it. And then you kind of get to, you know, like then now we just do what we can. Like, it's not, you're not 20. You know what I mean? Like you have to really, like people have to embrace that. And I, and it's, it's a struggle for me too. I have to remember like, yeah, I'm not my fast metabolism girl that, you know, right. whatever. But um, yeah, I just, I just, as a mom, especially of two girls, yeah. um, it's so important for me to be the, the model of just yeah. healthy and, you yeah. know, positive and what we say just feeds your soul of love, you know, and just really it's love, you know, self-love, yeah. learning how to love yourself so much. Yes. that the world just, you know, all those little puzzle pieces, you know, will appear and to trust that. Well, I mean, we do attract what we talk about. You know, I, I remember when I got to a certain age, cause I used to really, really be vain, you know, about the way I looked and I, I feel more comfortable in my own skin now. Like I go to the grocery store. I don't care. Well, I have a mask, so I don't need me. I know, right? Anymore, right? Yeah. Forget but about I mean, the wrinkles. I, no one sees my, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm always like, wow, oh, I love this. I don't want to take it off ever. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I think also like my daughter, she is a goddess, six foot tall, beautiful, just doing stuff that's amazing. And she's very sensitive. So she will, when she starts being bothered by posts and things like that, or she's feeling insecure, she'll step away from social media. So I really um, honor her for you know, doing what's true for her. And I think that's important for all of us too. It's like, we don't like, there are times I step away too. I don't want to be inundated or be in the violent, you know, <laughs> conversations that are going on online and stuff like that. But um, yeah, being comfortable in our, our own skin is um, I, I'm getting better at it, mm -hmm. but there are certain things, like I said, now, just like lately. And, and what you brought up was so important was about the self-talk because it, we are on a loop you know, I can't remember what it was the other day, but I, I've caught myself just talking like my, I, my, my ego just has, or my mind just has conversations with itself all day long, just stupid random conversations, oh, funny. you know? And if you really catch yourself, you'll catch yourself saying some pretty stupid things or some things that you know are creating what you don't want. Right. And so you have to be really conscious about what you're saying. So thank you for bringing that up. That is so super important. Um, because generally, otherwise we're on autopilot and you, as you remember, right, we, we create from our subconscious thoughts too. Right. But that's a really big part of it. Um, 
being aligned is really important too, but we still have to kind of work through the, <laughs> the old stuff, the old, right. self-talk, the old wounds, the old beliefs. And all that kind yes. Of stuff. You know, in my, um, when I teach my kids in the course that I'm teaching, I teach them a morning routine. Cause I mm-hmm. feel like it's so important to start your day in alignment. Yes. Um, don't you do, you do a meditation. Tell me, I loved something you lay in bed. Oh, well, that's one of the things I do. Um, I do all kinds of things. Like I first, I start out here. I'll just show you a couple of things I do like Qigong. You can, you know, get your energy going, pat your head, rub your ears from the top to the bottom. Cause your ears on the outside correlate to your spine. And then if you're um, a big Donna Eden fan, she starts out with this basic routine. Anything you tap, this is your digestion. Hmm. And then she goes down here to your, collarbone and you wake that up but do you lay in bed and do that yeah yeah Yeah. I have so many things I do on a regular basis and then I also do um you know the visualizations and stuff like that before I get out of bed I mean it literally takes seconds but you have to commit to something and you don't have to do a lot of things I have I do the energy routines because I think it's so healing um and and I just I feel better a lot of times when I do it Mm -hmm. you know Uh, also grounding and centering, you know, you can, I don't know if you've ever heard of meridians or whatever, but you can ground and center in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And then setting your intention for the day, you know, just closing your eyes or before you even open your eyes, you know, uh, visualizing your day or thinking of something. Um, I think I, did I use the one where I think about my daughter or something that makes me really, um, high vibrational, like, um, my daughter's love or when she was being born or something she said or something I pick something that makes me feel highly vibrational I elevate my emotions I almost cry and I'm in this deep state of gratitude and what do they say it only takes like I think Abraham Hicks said what 30 seconds or 50 seconds to to raise your vibrations and hold it you know just there for a little while and your body starts to heal things start to open up right so you can do all kinds of little tricks to get your, your day going in the right direction. Yeah. I love, I think it's, I'm such a morning routine person. And now after with these kids teaching them, their parents will say, Oh, our house is energy. So different. She comes down and she's happy. And she's, and I said, yeah, because she, she's doing her alignment. She's getting in the vibration of seeing the beautiful magic, you know? And I, you know, I think of how, you know, when, when kids, you know, even adults, you know, will just get up and take a shower and go to work. Like, I, you know, like just on a, on a nothing, like there's just, they're robots. Yeah. And they're creating from whatever they've been holding from yesterday or whatever. I really want to just acknowledge you for what you're doing with your kids. Cause you and I talked about how my daughter just did not have that opportunity and it just makes kids feel better about themselves. It feels like they have some control over their life, you know, which most kids don't. Right. And, and they're making choices. And then it also is just healthy for them in so many different ways. So I really want right. to honor you and acknowledge you for that. Oh, thank you. Work. It gives me tears because I just have so, I love them. I just, there's something yeah. about that. I see yeah. that. I see the, um, it's like they, they know deep in, in their heart that they want that, but their mom's signing them up <laughs> and then they're <laughs> sitting with me. And then I right. still see like, oh, you know, God brought you to me. It's like, they're, uh, they're ready. They're like this old soul. That's like, just Mm -hmm. feed me, Ashley, feed me like a little bird, you know, like what can you, what else can you give me? It's working. And then the, and then the next week it's like, oh my gosh, that worked. What's, what are you going to give me now? It's like, they just keep, they're so hungry for it, you know? And I see these kids that aren't, are lost and, you know, and then at what 30 or 40 years old, they're going to be at the seminar crying because their, their life was, you know, all these limiting beliefs that, you know, that blocked them from this, this magic or beautiful life that they, you know, are now going to live, but could have lived earlier. So that's really my, you know, I think in my twenties, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, (laughs) what was I thinking? Like, oh, I would never. (laughs) I mean, you are the example too. You know, I wish I would have been a better example. I was, I was not in a place for my daughter to, you know, I, I, since changed obviously but she's already been damaged and wounded and she's trying to find her way too but we do have to remember because as mothers we take on the responsibility of our kids you know we have regret we we feel bad about what we did we can't go back and redo it right right but again i keep hearing from people like the people you've talked to where 
we've each, even our kids, we, we picked our parents, we've picked our situation, we picked our time. And even though it's really difficult, we've come to learn certain lessons and to grow. And so I don't use that as an excuse, but I do use that to free myself. It's kind of yes. like, I'm doing the best I can. I love her with all my heart and I'm doing better now. I can't undo the past, but I have to allow her, you know, to, to go forward and live her life and learn her own lessons. Right. So if you're a parent and you <laughs> had the experiences like I've had, that's a good thing to remember. But, you know, like as, you know, saying the word regret, like instead right. of it and looking at it, like, yeah, we, she chose me to be her mom. I right. knew what I had to do. She's going to learn lessons through right. me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to go through all this stuff. She had to be the, the child to observe it and learn. And now she's going to figure her thing out. And that was her, her soul um, blue, blueprint or whatever you call it. But I, you know, we're all on these pods. Don't you feel like yeah. we're, we come back and then, oh, there you look so I can cute. See. Look, I've got green, green. I love green. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like actually, the age of Aquarius. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's helping with the light because the light's really hurting my eyes. So I'm, Oh, I, no, I love it. I've done this for a while. But yeah, no, that's exactly right. You're, you're on point about everything. You really are. And so when you, when you talk about in a couple of your, um, episode videos or mm -hmm. YouTube videos, you're talking about, you think this is your last time on this earth. Yeah, I thought it was, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's like, you know, I keep having these, these drama traumas over and over. And, um, um, I don't really know. I mean, I've, I've had points in time when I felt like this might be it because I've just been through so much. But if you really read about uh, Pisces or sensitive intuitives or light workers, there's so many of us that are going through the same kind of stuff. You know, it's just kind of part of the journey. Plus a lot of past life stuff. I used to do past life regression, which I've learned so many amazing things. But again, we don't want to focus there. Like it stuff happened you know, and, and we may feel that like, I know I was burned at the stake for being a witch. Okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about that now. And I don't have to have that experience now. So we get to really focus on, you know, where it is we want to go now. And just remember audience <laughs> that if you're addicted to drama, like I was, that you don't have to keep having, you can have these big two by fours as reminders, or if the universe wants to teach you something, but right. you don't have to like, be afraid of having this horrible life of drama trauma all the time. And that comes from, I think, alignment. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot easier when you're aligned and you're not struggling and resisting. So, right. What do you, aren't you and Joe getting ready to, aren't you starting some like a wellness? We are working on a healing course that we've worked on for a while. And, and um, just because of various things, you know, with COVID and everybody's lives have exploded this past year, things have been kind of put to the back burner. But the cool thing is, divine timing, right? You know, we have all these things kind of ready and sitting and waiting, but things have shifted. Like for me, I'm, I'm making some new videos about uh, what I'm learning now, which is what I knew to be true uh, before, but I've, I've gotten words for it now. And that is healing. You can do all kinds of modalities because as human beings, that's what we do, right? And they're, they're great, but your alignment, your real healing comes from your alignment with source. And so I'm shifting the way that I'm saying things, I'm adding things um, to that course. So we're, you know, we're just, we just moved again. So we're, <laughs> we're trying to get resituated and uh, move forward. So but when, when you coach your clients, when you have your programs and I know you have your TV show, are you, um, do you just work individually? Are you seeing what they need? And you're like lifting like, what are you doing? Um, well, my coaching, I used to have some group coaching programs, but I've been doing, um, individual coaching programs and I actually coach people in business intuitively and help them to build their businesses online. And I also coach people just in daily life. Some people will come to me and just say, I want to change this, this, and this. And we intuitively go through that for about three months at a time. So that's why I said my coaching, I love what I do because I really am high when I can help people. And it's so cool when you coach people, right? And you just allow the information to come in. I mean, it's like you get out of the way and you're the, the mouthpiece and this cool stuff comes out, right? And people's right. lives are changed, not because of you, but because of the divine. So I'm trying to find my way to what's the new way of coaching. What's the real new message? You know, we can all coach life coaching and we can do all kinds of things, but like you, you're on target now with your passion and your purpose. Mine is shifting. So I'm in that phase of waiting, not trying to figure out, but waiting for the information to come in for what's next. So, so you're moving, <laughs> you're moving. So when you're doing that, are you like 
you're following taking the puzzle pieces and like is that what you mean yeah and also like for the healing course or um writing books i had started writing my book my second book a couple of times and i just looked at it because it's so funny it's like when when you don't have the information or you feel like you're procrastinating a lot it's not really procrastination you're either not aligned or it's not time you know you just don't have those pieces yet when when the pieces came together for your turning point it was it was just i was channeling it it was so easy i mean it had a couple of chapters that were hard but they for the most part it was easy so if you're out there and you're trying to write a book or you're trying to do something and you just you're frustrated you know just take a step back breathe allow the information to come in and watch because you'll see that you're going to get the pieces that you need, the missing pieces. And then when it comes time, it'll come in effortlessly. So I'm still taking steps. I'm still taking action. I'm doing interviews. I'm, I'm writing, I'm working on the course. I'm, you know, I'm working on my website. I'm doing different things, just kind of waiting for the divine to say, that's exactly where you want to go. Yeah. I love that. With and your book, what, sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, very. Yeah. yeah, you have to be aware of those thoughts and those frustration. Um, but with your book, um, what was that inspiration to write my, that book? My next one or this one? The the, the one the your turning point. Oh, you try. Oh, my inspiration was just my life path. I mean, I had started so many books before, and then when I had the fire, I lost all my computers. I lost all my writing. I lost all my artwork. You know, like I lost everything. So I was like, oh, so I had to start all over again. And so wow. I just, my, my life really has been about, you know, this whole book is about following your intuition, saying yes to what's hard. Um, you know, knowing that life is happening for us. We talk about all, that all the time. And there are so many people that would tell me that's a bunch of BS <laughs> because stuff is happening to me, but that makes me, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at the hands of fate. Right. So, I mean, and there's a, there's a piece of that, right? Like, we we're not in control of everything, right? The divine is in control of things, some things that we're not, but there's a lot that we are in control of. And if we can take a new, see a new perspective on things that are happening in our lives, it, it changes everything. It may not be easy, but you always try to look for the good in a situation. You know, what is this here to teach me? That's like the biggest question you can ask. What is this here to teach me? Right. And don't try to figure out what it is. Just let it sit and let the answers come. Let life show you what it is by, you know, situations coming up or whatever. So I just really wanted people to know what I've been going through because these hard things in this book were my saving grace. They really led me to this point. Now I'm shifting and going in another direction. Right. But this is where people can really start you know, saying yes, looking at life differently when things happen, um, you know, well, so yeah, your stories. I mean, geez, I, I mean, just to even have everything gone in a fire at a, that alone is like a wake up, like, whoa, it's really all I have is me. <laughs> that was hard. That was, you talked about the word surrender and that has been my lesson ongoing. And the thing is, is that we can surrender and we can let go, but there are deeper levels of it. And you can feel the resistance. You can absolutely feel the resistance. Um, uh, oh God, I would love to share. Do, you have, do we have a minute? Uh, uh, sure. I just want to share something with your audience because I think it's really important. I was reading um, Katie and Gay Hendricks' book, Conscious Loving. And I was in a relationship a couple of years ago briefly. And we would do these, um, these exercises. And I, I found this so important. And so I try to share it all the time. You know how when something, I'm just giving the scenario, like you're with your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever it is. And, some, and somebody says something to you or they do something to you. And you feel like you've been attacked. Like you had nothing to do with it. Right. And you get, what do you do normally? You get- yeah, re Yeah, you react. Yeah, you get angry. You're like, why are you doing this to me? Right? So there's this beautiful exercise that you can do around responsibility and also other things. There are two paths that we can take, right? And right. so in this book, I started playing with this, this idea. And that is when something happened to me, somebody did something or said something and I was angry and I reacted. When I stayed in that mode of going, you know what? I am not taking responsibility for this. It is not my fault. They just did something to me and, and I did nothing. I was just sitting here then it would escalate or the argument would go on for days right. because I was set in my resistance. It was going to be, it was not my fault. But then I started playing with something like that happened again. And for a moment I was like, Hey, 
something just happened to me again, but I'm not responsible. But then I thought, oh man, I gotta, I gotta do what conscious loving says. I have to take 100% responsibility for everything that happens to me. Right. And so even when I didn't want to, I started playing with, okay, I don't know how, I don't know where this came from, but I'm going to say I'm hundred percent responsible for just what, whatever just happened to me. And that really stuck in my craw, right? Because I'm thinking I didn't do anything, but I said it anyway, everything, the, the arguments would dissipate just like that, just like that, just for saying it, just right. play. So yeah. just remember, there's always two roads we can go, right? The road of resistance or the road of, oh shoot, what the heck? I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't agree with this, but I'm going to say, okay, I'm responsible. And, and watch what happens. Watch what happens. It's miraculous, but you have to play with it, right? You have to see the difference. And so that's why I really encourage people to, in life, to start experimenting. Yeah, you can go this way. What happens when you go that way? Well, you can go this yeah. way. I mean, there are always two roads to, to choose. Yeah, from. always. It's all, there are choices in our life. That's we have so choices. That's the right? kind of stuff I, yeah, that I share in this book, you know, exercises, tools, um, ways of looking at things that are really going to help. I hope. Um, yeah. you know, that just even having, um, you know, in a marriage or sisters, siblings, you know, the fighting <laughs> or the, you know, reacting and teaching, like it's the same thing. It's the same thing in a marriage or a friendship, you know, the minute you don't react, then feel that it's like even the feeling in your body, the energy goes completely limp because like, that doesn't even matter. Okay, great. That's, and you're not feeding that um, right. you're not feeding it with the reaction. Yeah. It just disappears. So Absolutely. to just have that calmness and knowing that, you know, I always say like they're on their path and you're on yours. Right. It might not be the same. They right. feel a different way. Great. Then let them feel that way and just be okay. And love. <laughs> I know it's hard at the beginning, but once you, it's like a muscle, right? You just start getting muscle. better at it. Yeah. Yeah. And I for think sure. it comes from, you know, self-worth issues and things like that, or, or anger that you're holding on to, but you can still play with it. You can play with it when you start seeing it's like magic, right? <laughs> when you take the, uh, the easier route, which may feel harder initially, then you start wanting, wanting to play with that more and, and go down that road more often. Right. So, you know, and I think all of this is like, a, is they're like muscles. It's the, all yeah. the words and the, you know, yeah. the thoughts and just getting that awareness of what triggers you and, you know, right. having that place of like that, I always say it's, it is, it is an awareness and it's having that, like that look like, wow. And to have that alignment right. because, and the vibration, cause it's all this, it's all, part, it's all part of the puzzle that comes to this whole of being in this place of like, okay, this is all happening for me. Yeah. And what is the, where is the gift? Where's what, do, you know, and I just look, I was, you know, thinking, you know, we're, I'm 52, you're 62, right? So mm -hmm. 10 years difference. So we're like on this, you know, the last, whatever they say, 50 years, <laughs> right. you never know. I mean, right. I, I say like, we don't. And why would you even not do something? That's my other thing that, you know, why, why would you just live your life in this, um, as a robot when you can do something, you know, yeah. and love and yeah. be the difference maker and be the person that's going to, you know, with the girls, like go give compliments. I want you to go spend the whole day giving compliments, like learn how to look out, you know, just do something to give. I love that. I did that when I was part of a leadership training program for four months in San Diego. And it was funny because, you know, we'd go out and do it to people. We'd give compliments and people were, a lot of people were like, what do you, what do you want? Or, you know, they, they were taken aback by it because it's not something that people normally do. Yeah. So funny we're, it's so easy for us to be in the negative all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Do that. But it's like, we forget there's this whole other, you know, positive side, um, that, that we never take. And I don't know why it's just so easy to look at life through, you know, these, this one pair of glasses when there's this whole other world over here that we haven't explored. So, yeah, no, um, totally. Yeah as we wrap up, will you, um, what would you give your, um, let's see your first, like when you're 18, getting ready, like your daughter's, you know, what would you do? What would advice would you give yourself now as a 62 year old woman and your experience in life? What would you say to her? Man, that makes me emotional. I was so lost when I was 18. I would say, you know what? You are so loved. The universe loves you so much that it absolutely 
100% took all of its energy to bring you here at this time in this space. You may not who, know who you are right this second, but know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are loved more than anything. You are the miracle. You know, this is all a miracle. We are so wrapped up in our external circumstances, you know, and, and comparing ourselves to other people and stuff. And each person is so unique, you know, a divine fingerprint of God and every fingerprint is different. And so I would, I would just, you know, it's kind of like what you do when you do the inner child work. I would, I would hug her and say, it, none of this other stuff matters. You know, you matter, you are loved and you can just trust, you know, just trust in that surrender and keep moving forward. And then I wouldn't have struggled so much, you know, fighting and clawing my way through life. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I love that. It's, and I just, you know, I look back to it thinking, you know, to do that, like I always think, gosh, if I, what advice would I give? You know, it's always an interesting perspective to have as a, you know, a woman going into their second half of life, like what all the lessons that we learn and the growth so, and all the things that we you know, experience that in that are gifts and that they taught us so much. And that's really the reason that we're here. So I've loved our time together with you. Um, you are a joy. Thank you so much. I feel so like I've known you forever and I probably I know I love it. Yeah. Uh, this Thank is just a gift. I the think of that having this podcast be, I would never have had this hour with, with you. I and know, it's just I like, it. it's just yeah. such a gra gra grateful moment. This is my grateful moment of the day. Oh, thank, I thank will say that I'm grateful to you. Oh, thank you. I'll, we will do a part two one day. We'll, our paths will cross one day. Absolutely. I look forward to it.